Hello and welcome back. Today we are taking a look at how to use the EMD algorithm in MATLAB. You can find all MATLAB files that I use throughout my videos on my Git. The link is given in the description box. So for the one-dimensional univariate EMD, MATLAB provides a built-in function that we can easily apply to our data. But first we need some data. And to keep it simple, we will just generate some synthetic time-dependent data in the first part of this MATLAB script. fs is the sampling frequency that we set to 500 Hz, and dt is basically the step width that results from the predefined frequency. Then we set the stopping time to 5, which defines the total width of our data. From all these predefined quantities, we can then build our time vector t. And I also include another stopping time, which is used um, only for plotting the data. It just defines the extract of the data that we are looking at for clarity. Now that we have defined our time vector and how we sample data and time, we also need some synthetic data. Therefore, we simply take two sine waves with two different frequencies, f1 and f2, and two amplitudes, a1 and a2. And you see that we just combine um, both sine waves by addition. So we are keeping it very simple here. Of course, you can play around with all the values we just defined or even generate more complicated synthetic signals to see how the EMD behaves on these data sets. Okay, so it's always good to have some intuition of how your data actually looks like. So let's first plot our synthetic data. Here you see that I restrict the temporal domain to our second stopping value, which essentially, essentially makes the plot clearer. And I also added a saving option if we want to take a look at the data later on. Now when we run the script, we see our data, which combines the two sine waves. The sine with the smaller frequency is our large-scale base oscillation, and it gets disturbed within a single period by the oscillations of the second sine wave with the higher frequency. Next, we apply the EMD to this data. You see here, we are using the simplest implementation of this function. But in general, MATLAB allows you to specify much more details of the sifting process. For example, the maximum number of IMFs, the maximum number of sifting operations, or the interpolation method that connects the extrema. So just check out MATLAB's documentation for more details. Once we have performed the decomposition, we plot the resulting IMFs and the remaining residual. Since we do not know a priori how many IMFs we will obtain, we just use a for loop that adapts to the size of the matrix containing the IMFs. And we are using the tiled layout option um, since it easily allows us to display several subfigures in one big figure. Again, we restrict the time axis, which is the x axis, to have a nicer plot. And this is how the IMFs look like. As expected, the modes are sorted depending on the scale size. So the first IMF contains the highest oscillations, so the largest frequency, and the residual the smallest frequency. We could speculate that the first IMF contains our high frequency sine wave and the second mode um, the lower frequency sine wave. But we need further analysis um, like using the Hilbert transform to actually calculate the frequency and the amplitude of the IMFs. The remaining modes 3 and 4 and the residual are presumably just spurious remainders that arise from small deviations of the first and the second IMF to the original data due to the spline fitting, and we can ignore them. I hope that this video convinced you how easy it is to use the single dimension univariate EMD in MATLAB, and maybe you just try it with your own data. However, as you might already know from my other videos, the univariate EMD has some drawbacks when we want to compare the IMFs of different signals or analyze multi-component data. So hopefully I'll see you in the next video where we take a look at such data and decompose it with more sophisticated versions of the EMD. Bye!